Welcome once again to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with us during our Thursday night Bible study. And I pray that you will receive something that will prepare you for your future journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, arrest our minds and give us your thoughts and help us to discover anew the peace that you have waiting for us uh, that is beyond our ability to understand. In our Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our study text for tonight, uh, uh, October 8th in the year 2020, is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And uh, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. That's God's word for us tonight. Now, last week we talked about uh, praying right for God's peace. And this week we're looking at the idea of thinking right for God's peace. And just a little heads up, next week at the Lord's will, we're going to talk about living right for God's peace. So this week we're, we're dealing with thinking right for God's peace. Now, as it is with any lofty thoughts that we may attain, our thoughts must be in line with God's thought, thoughts, because God's thoughts are much better for us than uh, our thoughts. Our, uh, God's thoughts are much better for the whole world. So if we, uh, members of this uh, planet, would think more in line with God's thoughts, then everything overall would be much better for us. Now, Romans chapter 11, verse uh, 33 says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And then the message version of Romans 11 and 33 says, Have you ever come on anything quite like this extravagant generosity of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Have you ever come across anybody that would give their son or their own life for somebody else? It says, this deep, deep wisdom, it's way over our head. And we'll never figure it out. Psalms 92 verse 5 through 6. And this is the good news translation says, how great are your actions, O Lord? How deep are your thoughts? This is something a fool cannot know. And someone who is stupid cannot understand. Now, don't think that just because you think you're so smart, like I do, that we are not included in the fools or the stupid. When, it come, when we compare ourselves with Jesus, then we come up much less, much dumber than we, we think we are. So always learn to compare yourself with Jesus and not with somebody else. Uh, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 says, God, My thoughts, saith the Lord, are not like yours, and my ways are different from yours. That's the uh, Good News translation. And then the message version of those say, of, of, of uh, Matthew, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 through 9 uh, says, I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. God decrees. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. 
And the way I think is beyond the way you think. And that's God speaking to each one of us individually and then collectively. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, drink, and and, and he says to thee, uh, but his heart is not with you. In other words, he's saying that we ought to be careful when we're, t- when we're dealing with one another. We don't deal with each other out of God's mindset. Most of the time, it's out of our mindset. And somebody can, can be, be smiling in our face and all of the time figuring out how they can bring us down. So, so what what some people say can't be trusted and discover what they are thinking in their hearts because a tree is known by the fruit it bears. So more so, uh, watch what people do more than paying attention to what they say. Now, it's important to listen to people, pay attention to what they say. But it's more important to pay attention to what they do or what we do. It's important that we take heed to Philippians chapter two, verse five, that says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We must work diligently to change the way we think if we would enjoy the peace of God that passes all understanding. No wonder Jesus Uh, started teaching and preaching about our attitude or mindset. We need a daily dose of attitude adjustment. Peace involves the heart and the mind. And and though uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 26 verse uh, 3 says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he or she trusts in thee. In other words, because we trust in God and God will keep our minds uh, in perfect peace because we trust him. Now, wrong thinking leads to wrong feelings. And before long, the heart and mind are pulled apart and we are strangled by worries. And remember, we started uh, uh, the earlier part of Philippians chapter four starts out by reminding us not to worry. And it's worrying that that just pulls our minds in all different directions. And eventually it we will be strangled as as it were by worrying. We must realize that thoughts are real and powerful, even though they cannot be seen or weighed, or measured. Paul taught the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. He says, we must bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. There's a poem that says, uh, and and in essence, this is written based upon what Paul was teaching to the Corinthians. He said, sow or plant a thought, and you will reap an action. Sow an action, and you will reap a habit. Sow a habit, and you will reap a character. And sow a character, and you will reach a destiny or reap a destiny. Uh, Paul spells out in details the things that we ought to think about as Christians. He says, whatever is true, and please hear me uh, when I say uh, say this to you. This, this, this is something that I ran across that really blessed me. And, and if you allow it, if you would open your heart, I believe it will bless you tremendously too. Now, so, so please uh, uh, hear this and allow it to change your thinking. There's a, there's a uh, Presbyterian a uh, preacher, a theologian, that uh, his name is Dr. Walter Culver, Culvert. 
And he did, he worked, he did some work in surveys about the thinking, the thought, our thoughts. And he reported on a survey of worry that indicates that only 8% of the things people worry about are legitimate matters for us to be concerned about. Only 8%. And then the other 92% were either imaginary, stuff that's just in our mind, and we're imagining it. It says, things that never happen or involve matters which the people had no control of in any way. In other words, our we spend so much time on things that we have no control over. Things that we're just imagining. A lot of times we're imagining what some people do to us. And they're going on about their business and we're mad as I don't know what out there. Satan is a liar. So says John chapter 8 verse 44. And he wants to corrupt our minds with his lies. He was a murderer. This is John chapter 8 and verse 44. The English standard version it says, and, and, and there's some before it, but this is the latter part of the verse. It said, he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. And so we have to be careful at how we speak out of our own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse uh, uh, 3, I think it is, says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from us uh, from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. We must be careful. We must allow God to guard our hearts, to stand, stand guard over our hearts. And then Genesis, remember in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, uh, Satan said, Yea, hath God said? That's the way he approached, approaches us. He approached Eve that way, and he approaches us that way. He presents us with the word of God, but he will either add something to it that will change the meaning, or he will take just a little away to change the meaning. So we must be careful with Satan. The Holy Spirit controls our minds through truth. John chapter uh, 17 and verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is truth. 1 John chapter 5 verse 6, this is the latter part of that verse, it says, And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Whenever we believe a lie, Satan takes over. Whatever is honest and just, this means worthy of respect and right. And there are many things that are not respectable and Christians should not think about those things. This does not mean that we hide our head in the sand and avoid what is unpleasant or unpleasing to God and should be unpleasing and unpleasant to us. Gossip should be unpleasing and unpleasant to us. Backbiting, putting somebody down, trying to, to speaking words that will destroy a person's influence. Those things should be unpleasant and displeasing to us. Now, it does not mean that we do not focus our attention on shameful things and permit them to control our thoughts. That, that We should not allow that to happen. We should not focus our attention on shameful things and permit them to control our thoughts. Whatever is pure, lovely, 
and of good report. Pure probably refers to the moral purity, since the people then and now were and are constantly attacked by temptations to sexual impurities. Ephesians chapter seven, chapter four, verse 17 through 19, the English Standard Version says, now this, and it's speaking in reference to the new life in Jesus Christ. It says, now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their mind. Wasting mind time, wasting mind power. They are darkened in their understanding and alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. Verse 19 says, they have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Now, lovely means beautiful and attractive and not from the erotic point of view, but beauty that comes from the inside, that shows on the outside. Not how we dress, how we make ourselves up, but there should be a greater beauty that comes from the inside. That is spirit based instead of physical based. And a good report means worth talking about. It's appealing to it's appealing conversation. The believers must major on the high and noble thoughts and not the base or the low thoughts of this corrupt world. Whatever possesses virtue and praise, if it has virtue, it will motivate us to do better. And if it has praise, it's worth commending to others. No Christian can afford to waste mind power on thoughts that tear down or that would tear others down if these thoughts were shared. If you will compare this list to David's description of the word of God in Psalms uh, 19 verse 9 through 7, you'll see that there is a parallel. The Christian who fills his heart and mind with God's word will have a built-in radar protecting, detecting wrong thoughts. People that love the word of God usually have great peace. And great peace have they who love thy law, says Psalms 119 verse 165. Right thinking is the result of daily meditation on the word of God. But worry is the lack of peace and peace is a lack of worry. Again, worry is a lack of peace and peace is a lack of worry. Just as Jesus was able to maintain an unusual peace while they were crucifying him. He displayed that great peace by praying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus had the peace of God and can, it can cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. And it's the same with us. And the Philippians 4 and 7 says, and the peace of God, which surpasses, goes far beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. We can also have that peace which surpasses all understanding. This peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We don't have to worry about death because uh, Jesus overcame death. Yes, he did die on an old rugged cross and they took him down off that cross and buried him in a borrowed tomb. And we don't have to worry about the grave as being an obstacle that we cannot overcome because he rose from the tomb or the dead 
from the grave with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. And he has power right now to lift up bow down head. Power to give sight to the blind. Power to set free those who are held captive by Satan and sin. And as, as I leave you, I want to leave you with a, the, with a song that's on my mind. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Verse one of that says, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. The second verse in stanza says, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. And the last one said, when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your living word that you so often cause to come alive in us. Your powerful word brings about so much enlightenment, showing us so much that we don't know about even ourselves. So as we go forth, help us to practice allowing you to guard our hearts and our minds from wrong thinking so that we can enjoy your peace by thinking right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us for our Thursday night Bible study. And we pray that something I've said uh, will be of benefit to you and will help you to, to have a, a more abundance of God's peace as we go forth. And I don't know what next year is going to be. I don't know what next month's going to be. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be. But we are living in a time right now where we really need God's peace. So remember to wear your mask, uh, practice social distancing, and practice sanitary uh, hygiene. Wash your hands often. And the last thing I have to say, well, you know what I'm going to say. Vote. Vote. Vote on November 3rd, or you can vote early. I'm, I'm voting early. It's usually a lot less line. And the early voting starts on the 14th of this month. So take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.